Out of nowhere, Shiny came with another Hex Maniac Advanced tutorial. This tutorial is basic number 5, item editing. For this video, I'll be introducing you to the items table, where we'll be adding item attributes. I'm going to demonstrate the process of making several items, including an evolution stone and a repel, and I will be testing these items in-game. Also, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more Hex Maniac Advanced tutorials and other stuff. So here I'm in the GitHub page for Hex Maniac Advance, and now I'm at its releases page. Whatever's on top is the version of Hex Maniac Advance you should be installing. By using the latest version, you'll have almost all of the known bugs fixed and almost all of the new features in the software. Under the Assets section, you will find a couple of things you can download. The debug version does some extra things that bug reporters would like to know about. The x64 version is designed for 64-bit PCs, and the x86 version is designed for 32-bit PCs. Also, one of the biggest pitfalls of Hexmanic Advance is that it cannot run on a Mac nor Linux. And you can't really get around it with other things like Wine, because when the developer made Hexmanic Advance, he used stuff that was strictly exclusive to Windows. In order for the latest few versions of Hexmanic Advance to run, you need a thing called .NET 6 Desktop Runtime. You can find it and the releases page in the description. As you're scrolling through this webpage, you will see a lot of downloads that say .NET 6 something, but the one thing you need to get is .NET 6 Desktop Runtime. Download the version that best matches your operating system, and run the installer after downloading it. First of all, I'm going to show you where the items are in Hexmaniac Advance. To get to this menu right here, click the Edit button and find the Go To option. Notice the keyboard shortcut as well. You can search for items underneath the Explore More bar, and it should be somewhere underneath the Data subdirectory. What you want is data.items.stats. Alternatively, back in the Go To menu, you can click the Items button. Now you're going to see all of the items in the game. Sprinkled throughout, you're going to notice some items that just have question marks for their names and indices of zero, breaking the sequence that is just increments of one. Just a note, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire do not have sprites for items, so this is why in the go-to menu you will see an overworld Pokeball instead of a potion like what you would see in Pokemon Emerald. If we want to add a new item into the game, the only way we could reliably do it is to replace an existing item, like the ones with 8 question marks each. I'll pick this one. So I go to its corresponding row in the hex content viewer, which is basically a spreadsheet at this point, and I give it the name that I want. I'll also set its index to whatever number shows up after the data.items.stats slash, which is where my mouse cursor is. Honestly, they didn't even need to put zeros for the indices for unused items. I could adjust how much this item costs, so I could set it to a really high number and have it sell for half the price, or I can keep it at zero so I cannot sell it at a Pokemart. I'll go over some attribute data later, but the hold effect attribute is for certain held items that have a specific purpose in battle. This item won't have any. Param is flexible, different items use this value differently and you will see an address of this item's description. If multiple items share the same description, then you will see a message saying that one description is used by multiple pointers. Editing one description edits them all, as you will see here. That's not what we always want. Click Repoint and this one in order for this item to have its own unique description. Then you can edit it as you wish, using backslash n for new lines. I can also edit item data within the table panel on the left. What I can do is replace the question mark icon with my own custom icon for this item. Like with descriptions, I have to make a copy of the sprite and palette so that I can edit it without editing other item slots. Now what I'm going to do is import the sprite. 
So I just choose a random sprite from a Minecraft resource pack I made several years ago. The import happened successfully. Also, you can only have 16 colors per sprite, and the top left one will always be transparent. Hex Manic Advance can almost perfectly guess which color is going to be transparent. Also, the image was 16 by 16, which isn't really ideal for Hex Manic Advance. Item sprites are capped at 24 by 24 pixels. So what I'm doing is creating another item called a gold chain so that the 16 colors limitation is not a problem and the image doesn't have that much negative space. Another thing I can configure is the hold effect, which is basically what this item can do if the Pokemon is holding it. Most, if not all, are special effects that happen in battle. There are a lot of them if you scroll down. For instance, I can make this gold chain function like a focus band. I can also change what pocket the item is in. So for instance, this can be a key item instead of a regular item. The param field works different for different items. For HP restoring items that are not berries, this param field actually does nothing. You would have to make these items held items in order for this param value to actually have an effect. You have to look at the arg value over there if you want to modify how much HP a particular item restores. In the case of items that boost the total damage of a particular type of move, such as the C incense, the param field is the percentage increase, so 5% in this case. This back key item field determines whether or not you can register this item and activate it via the select button. So you can register a super rod or an acrobike, but you cannot register an SS ticket. The key item value is either set to 0, 1, or 2, and it determines whether or not it is an important item. If this value is at least 1, then you cannot store it into the PC. Notably, you cannot deposit HMs. At the very bottom of the table tool, you will see a parameter called Battle Extra. Only the fishing rods use this parameter, and this field varies based on which fishing rod you are selecting. If you look at the data.items.effects field, you will see a pointer pointing to a lot of data. Instead of editing the pointer, you can just look at the data in the text box underneath because HMA was able to recognize it. Some of the attributes are self-explanatory. You'll notice that require attack selection is set to false for revival herbs, but for something like a max elixir, it is set to true. General is treated like a list of things this item can do, such as heal health and revive in the case of a revival herb. Something like a max elixir will have restore power points in their general list, while a rare candy would have a level up attribute. Clear stat is short for clear status condition, such as freeze, and if you look at the vitamins, increased stat increases the EVs of a stat. The next quote-unquote stanza of attributes are the stats that increase when you use this item in battle. X items are the epitome of this. Different items alter the happiness value of a Pokemon by different amounts, and you can change those values. So for instance, I set the revival herb so that using it actually increases your happiness value by a lot. And this arg value kind of depends on what item you're editing, so a revival herb heals all of the HP of a Pokemon after reviving it, but a revive only restores up to half of a fainted Pokemon's HP. There are some other pointers in the item data, like the field effect and the battle effect. Those point to assembly code, which is out of the scope of this tutorial, so if you want to make items similar to items that we have here, you can just copy and paste the field effect or battle effect parameters. For instance, let's make another repel item. So I start by giving it a name and index, I make it a cheap item, and I set the parameter so that it wears off after 25 steps. I copy the field effect pointer from the regular repel, and I paste it into that same field for the cheap repel. I use the same sprite pointer as all of the other repels, and I pick a random palette to go along with it. I can just copy and paste from another item. Since the regular repel does not have any data for data.items.effects, there's no reason for the cheap repel to have something like that too. Lastly, I change the description so that it matches the item data that we just assigned to this new item. Now I'm going to open my emulator via clicking the green play button or pressing the F5 key. 
I'm too accustomed to use Visual Boy Advance, though a lot of people recommend using MGBA. I'm going to show you the functionality of this new cheap repel item in-game. Since I was editing Emerald, you can see the sprite for the new repel. Granted, it looks hideous, but I could manipulate the palette if I really wanted to. There's the description, and I can use this like the other three repels in the game. You're about to see that this item did not really last long, didn't it? Well, you get what you pay for, I guess. One field I have hold off on talking about is the type field, which is kind of confusing. On your end, there might just be numbers. And I'll have to show on screen which number corresponds to which field option. We have five options. Mail, Party Menu, Field, Pokeblock Case, and Bag Menu. Hopefully this legend helps if you only see the type field as a number in your version of Hexmanic Advance. As you're scrolling through the items table, you'll see the items type fields being represented by two letters, with the exception of mail. For instance, escape roads have the field item type, which allows the escape rope to move the player to another location when using the item. All of the Pokeballs use the type field differently, so they do not have special formatting. Before moving on with the tutorial, it is a good time to let you know that you need to make frequent backups of your ROM just in case anything goes wrong and you put your ROM into a precarious situation. It's like reaching a checkpoint in a video game. If you had to lose progress for some reason, try to lose as little as possible. Making a backup in Hexmanic Advance is easier than spreading butter. What you do is click the File button and then Export Backup. You will be given a prompt about your most recent change you made to your ROM. Answer it, and a backup of your ROM and your Tom L file will be created somewhere. In the folder where your ROM is located, you will see a Backups folder. Click it, and you will see a fresh backup of your ROM and your Tom L file. The next thing I'm going to show you is making an evolution stone. For this tutorial, I will make a special metal coat that allows some Pokemon like Onix to evolve without the need of trading. I cannot use the existing metal coat because there is no data.items.effects field for it. That field is only applicable to certain items, and the existing metal coat is not one of them. So what I do instead is make a new metal coat item underneath the leaf stone, set the index to the number after 98, Whip up a quick description, set the type to party menu so that it does not crash the game upon using the item. I also copy the leaf stones field effect pointer and paste it into the metal coats. And then I copy and paste over the original metal coats sprite and palette. Lastly, I copy and paste the pointer to the leaf stones data.items.effects field and I paste it into the metal coats so that the metal coat is seen as an evolution stone, just like the leaf stone. Lastly, I'm going to implement the evolution method for Onyx so that it can evolve via this metal coat into Steelix. Type the Pokemon you want to evolve with this stone. Click Data, Pokemon, and Evolution slash the Pokemon name. Scroll down a bit till you get to the evolution methods. I'm going to implement a second method, method 2. I set the method to Stone the arg value to the metal coat I just created, and the species to Steelix. Let's showcase this item. So you see the metal coat in game, its description, and its sprite. You'll also see that it opens the party menu, and I can use the evolution stone to evolve Onyx. Would you look at that? And underleveled Steelix. Alright, I'm going to quickly review all of the item fields that you can edit because I kind of went through all of them out of order. So you have the name of the item, you can change the index, which basically matches this thing right here, how much the item costs, the hold effect for when you're using it in battle. The param, which is flexible based on what type of item you're editing. Then you have the description of the item. And then you have various key item values, which are more so applicable for key items. And they determine whether or not you can store them into the PC or register with a select key. You have the, you've got the pocket the item is in the bag. You've got the type, which determines what exactly to do after you use this item. You have the field effect and battle effect, 
which are pointers to assembly code. You got battle extra, which is kind of a niche field. Battle usage determines how you can use this item in battle. You got the sprite and the palette, which control how the item looks. And you got this data.items.effects for select items which go in more detail about what this item can do to your Pokemon when you're using it. It's now time to showcase the other items I have made in Hexmanic Advance. Granted, I didn't really do a lot with them, but might as well. I realized that if I wanted my Pokemon to hold a gold chain, it actually has to be in the items pocket instead of the key items pocket, or else something like this would happen if I tried to give the gold chain to a Pokemon. Here's the bow item in game. I didn't really give it much of a purpose, nor a good sprite. Implementing held item effects like those for the life orb or assault vest would require a lot of battle mechanics changes, which are beyond the scope of these basic tutorials. If you scroll through Poke Community's resources, you might find item effects for a few items that you can implement. Lastly, you can see the golden chain actually keeping this girl vial alive. Make sure you choose a non zero param value. One thing I did not mention is editing TMs and HMs. That is actually covered in a different tutorial that I will have in a card at the top right of your screen. Besides that, my viewers, that is all I have for you today. You learned a lot about the items table and editing items within a ROM, and I hope that you put this information to good use. If you haven't already, check out our other Hexmanic Advanced tutorials. I have a hub of them linked in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.